Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Good morning class. Good morning. Okay, I'm Ms. Shalini. So today we will uh, discuss about physics, IGCSE. So we, I will give some tips to answer the questions, especially for paper four and paper six. Okay, I will um, give more focus on paper four since paper four you have 80 knots, okay? Okay, so first we look into the content overview. So the on the left hand side will be the uh, old version, old syllabus, and the right hand side will be the uh, new version, uh, a new syllabus, which you will be sitting for the exam in 2023. Okay, so they have um, added on one more topic, which is space topic. Okay. And then if you look at the core assessment, this is for core, those students who are taking core uh, papers. Paper one will be the multiple choice paper. 45 minutes and 40 marks. Paper three, the theory, you have the structure questions. So you have to spend about one hour, 15 minutes and 80 marks. And then for extended uh, students, the candidates uh, will be taking paper two and paper four. Paper two will be the multiple choice question. 45 minutes, 40 marks. And paper four, structure question, theory, which is one hour, 15 minutes, and 80 marks, similar to the uh, core candidates. And for the practical assessment, you have choice. Those who are taking core or extended, both of you can choose either paper five or paper six. But mostly we will be doing paper six, okay? So which is alternative uh, to the practical. So you have to spend about one hour and you will get about 40 marks for this paper. Okay, so the main topic or subtopic that has been removed from your syllabus about the digital electronics, you know, the uh, logic gate 01. Uh, so they have removed uh, digital electronics. About gas law also has been removed. Measurement of temperature under this uh, latent heat also has been removed. Okay, and then for pressure, they have removed barometer and manometer. You know what is barometer and manometer? To measure the pressure of gas and atmospheric pressure. Okay, and then thermal capacity has been removed, but specific thermal capacity or specific heat capacity is still in your syllabus. Okay. Okay, the topic that have been added to your syllabus is absolute scale of temperature. What is absolute scale of temperature? Absolute zero. Yes, it is Kelvin scale, right? Okay, and then electromagnetic magnetic spectrum about the communication. So you have to know the application of electromagnetic wave. Okay, like radio wave, why they use, uh, in uh, which area they use radio wave, microwave, all the applications you have to know. And then use of uh, the kilowatt hour. What is kilowatt hour? Is it power, energy? So like uh, electric bill, you have to use kilowatt hour. Okay, how you uh, calculate the energy and the power. Okay, and then space physics, you have studied about the life cycle of stars, Hubble constant, redshift, remember? Okay. Okay, so I focus on paper three and four, which is a, a theory paper. Okay, the difference between <clears throat> core and extended paper is just the way of answering the question and the way of asking the question. Okay, for uh, extended will be more detail in deep. Okay, so more detail and you have to give answer in detail as well. Unlike the core, it will be very straightforward. Okay, and also your syllabus, some part is covered in uh, core and some part is not covered. It's not detailed, it's still, still the same topics, but then not in detail. Okay. Okay, so you have uh, encountered these words in your exam questions, right? So, so you have to know uh, what are these terms um, asking you to answer the question. Like, for example, calculate means you have to show you're working on figures, numbers. Okay, you have to calculate based on the values given in the statement or the question. Okay, comment, give an informed opinion. So based on the statement, you have to give your opinion. Just give a um, comment what you know about the topic, okay? Compare. So compare is basically distinguish 
uh, distinguishing the things like for example um how we how you differentiate longitudinal wave and transverse wave how we differentiate um nuclear fusion and fusion okay, that it will be comparison compare videos is actually making conclusion based on the scenario based on the uh, concept okay define you have to give definition like for example define uh, resultant force define acceleration okay how do you answer this question you can actually get the answer from the formula okay and then describe describe just the uh, state the points of a topic okay uh, mainly about the characteristic okay you have to describe about the uh, scenario giving a uh, characteristic and also the nature okay and then uh, determine establish an answer using the information available the information already given in the statement or the sentence above the diagram okay and then explain usually explanation you have to provide reasons okay okay give okay this word actually you just need to um give a direct statement okay based on the um concept and then identify you just need to recognize name something okay justify justification which means you give a statement and you have to uh, give a reason why you say that why you said yes why you said no okay predict prediction is actually prediction is actually based on the available information you have to predict what will happen if you increase the volume if you decrease the volume what will happen to the pressure okay just predict and your prediction must be logical and based on the concept of physics okay sketch sketching will be like drawing but this is can this can be freehand but usually when they ask you to sketch for example optical topics sketch a normal line sketch a um, light ray passing through the convex lens you have to use ruler make sure you have used ruler and sketching only use pen or pencil pencil must use pencil okay okay state is also a direct statement okay state whether the pressure increase or uh, decrease just say increase or decrease just a direct statement suggest your suggestion okay like how um uh, suggest way to reduce air pollution suggest way to conserve energy so this is your suggestion okay all right okay step steps to answer calculation question if you see paper four people think that uh, calculation questions are very hard to answer calculation question is the easiest because all the information already provided in the question it can be in the statement statement form or diagram okay so look at the steps first read and understand the introductory sentences you always see before they ask question they give a statement right okay first you have to read and understand what they are talking about you have to know which area of physics they are talking about and what is the concept behind the scenario okay and then when you read please underline the keywords keywords means for example if they say the ball of uh, move from rest which means rest is a keyword although it is it is given in a word form you can actually extract a value from it rest means the object is not moving so the speed is zero okay and then sketch a simple diagram to simplify or picturize the scenario okay sometimes they give a long statement but you cannot grasp what they're asking about what they're talking about so what you can do is you just sketch a diagram based on your understanding based on the statement given so that will help you a lot okay and then extract all the information provided in the question okay uh, in the question they will give you how much is the acceleration uh, how much is the speed how much is the volume please do extract all the information and write it down or at least underline and label it okay and then write down the formula so before you start calculating start uh, doing your calculation make sure you write down the formula 
why I asked you to write down the formula? Actually, formula will help you to get a correct answer. Why? Okay, for example, if I give you, uh, if I don't give you the value, uh, okay, let's say they ask you to calculate um, kinetic energy, right? What is the formula of kinetic energy? Half mv square. Okay, if you don't write half mv square first, maybe you may substitute the value of mass to uh, velocity and velocity to mass. So your answer will be wrong because v, you have power of 2 square, right? Maybe you will square the mass value. So to avoid this, formula is very helpful. You have to write, start with formula. Okay? And then once you write the formula, you already extract the information from the question, right? So you st start substituting the values. And then give final answer together with the correct unit. Okay. So... You have to pay attention to the unit. Sometimes they give you um, density in kilogram per meter cube, and then they give you the volume in centimeter cube. It's not the uh, same uh, group of unit, right? So you have to make sure they are same to find the mass. Understand? Okay. And then use units that are consistent with the unit supplied and should not attempt conversion to other system of units, which means if the question already give you in um, kilogram and the question ever asks you to convert to gram, don't convert it. Okay? And then use two or more than two significant figures. Okay? To be safe, use three significant figures. Better. Okay? Okay, let's try this question. Can you take out a piece of paper and try this question? Based on the steps that I have given you just now, first you have to read and underline and then extract the information, write down the formula, substitute, final answer. Okay, this is a uh, 2021 paper, uh, February, March, 2021, variant two. Okay, those students online, I have already provided the FASE paper. Okay, let's do it together. Okay, figure 1.1 shows a piece of glass of thickness. Okay, you have an information here. Thickness, which is 2.0 centimeter. So, thickness is under length. Okay, so label it. Okay, this will help you a lot. And area 0 0.15 meter square. So, this is area. If you look at the unit, the length or the thickness is given in centimeter. And the area is given in meter square. So just circle it so that you know later you have to change it, convert it. Okay. And then the density of the glass is 2.6 times 10 to the power of 3 kilogram per meter cube. So this one given in kilogram meter cube. Obviously, you have to change this to meter. Okay, and this is rho, which is the density. Okay, calculate the weight of the piece of glass. Okay, you have to find the weight. W question mark. Okay, now you already underline, read the question, extract the information. Next, what do you have to do? Write the formula of equation. Okay, so first, you have to, uh, to find the weight, you must have mass. To find mass, you must have density and also volume. But the volume is not given directly. But you still can find it out. How to find? Volume equals to area times the length. Okay? So area is 
zero point one five. Make sure length you convert it to meters. So what is the answer for if you convert it to meter? Zero point zero two. Okay, divide hundred. Huh? So you get volume about three times ten to the power of negative three meter cube. Okay. Next, you have density and you already have volume. You can find the mass. Okay. So what is the formula of density? Mass over volume. Okay. Density is given 2.6 times 10 to the power of 3. Mass unknown. Volume is 3 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Can you get mass? How much you get? Sorry? How much did you get? 7? Seven? 7.8. Okay. But the question asks you to find? Weight. So weight equals to mg. Okay. So starting from 2023, the gravitational acceleration you have to use? 9.8. This is past year paper. If you check the answer scheme, they will use, uh, they have used hand, uh, 10. But you have to use 9.8. So since... We are practicing for your, uh, preparing yourself for your IGCSE. We use 9.8. So 7.8 times 9.8. Okay. What's the final answer? 76 must give the answer with the unit because here unit is not given. Weight is a form of force. So it is Newton. So you are done. Number. Too significant enough. Here, yeah, okay. okay. But if you use 10, it will be different value. Okay. okay next try. Uh, next question. Okay. Uh, this question is continuation from the previous question. Same question. You have to use the information given in the previous question. Okay, remember I told you if the sentence is too long, it cannot grasp what is uh, what are they saying. You can draw or sketch a diagram. Can you please try now? Extract, read the information. I mean, uh, read the statement. Underline. Extract the information. If you don't um, get it, you can try sketching the diagram. Raghavan, can you try to do a question? Okay, let's do it together. A piece of glass shown in figure 1.1 is used as the vertical viewing window. Okay, vertical viewing window of an aquarium. The atmospheric pressure outside the aquarium is 1.0 times 10 to the power of 5 Pascal. So this is your PATM, which means pressure of atmosphere, atmospheric pressure. Okay, when you underline the values right, please label it with the symbols. Okay, the average pressure on inside of the aquarium window is 1.3 times 10 to the power of 5 Pascal. So this is from the aquarium, from inside of the aquarium, right? This can be considered as the P liquid. Pressure exerted by the liquid inside the aquarium. Okay? Calculate the resultant force. Okay, you have to find the resultant Force acting on the window due to this pressure and state the direction which it acts. So what you can do? How to picture? Uh, how to sketch a picture diagram? Okay, you draw a vertical glass. Sorry if my drawing is not good. Just sketching up. Huh? Okay, let's say this is from inside. Okay, how much is the pressure exerted by the liquid from inside? 
So 1.3 times 10 to the power of 5. Okay. Outside the aquarium, we have air particles, which means the atmosphere, which is about 1.0 times 10 to the power of 5. On this way. So to find the resultant force, you have to know the resultant pressure. So how to find the resultant pressure? You minus what? Why minus? Why not plus? Resultant also can be some total of right. Opposite direction. Okay. One is acting from left and another one is from the right. So what you have to do? Find the pressure. 1.3 times 10 to the power of 5 minus 1.0 times 10 to the power of 5. You will get? How much you get? 30, okay, 0 0.3. I just follow this. Huh? 0 0.3 times 10 to the power of 5 Pascal. Okay, this is just the pressure. But the question asks you to find force. So what is the formula relating pressure and force? P equals to? Force over area. So how much you have to find out? Right here. Pressure in 0 0.3 times 10 to the power of 5. Area is already given in the statement, previous question. Okay, how much was it? 0 0.15. So when you calculate, you will get, final answer you will get? 4,500 unit Newton. Okay, direction of the force. If you con uh, if you look at the diagram, which one act, uh, having more value from which side? Inside. From inside to out. So your answer will be outward. Got it? Okay. Okay, we shall try a few more questions. Okay, this is from 2023 uh, paper. You can check your May, June 2023 paper. You have your paper with you, right? Raghavan, where's your paper? Okay, try to get the answer for question number two. May, June 2023. Question number two. Mandy, did you get the answer? Okay. How much you get? Yeah. Underline the information, values, label what value in the question. Okay. Student catches a cricket ball. The speed of the ball immediately before it is caught is 18 meter per second. This is the speed. And then the mass of the ball is 160 grams. So it is given in gram and you have to find kinetic energy. Kinetic energy in joules, right? The SI unit is joules. So you have to convert this to kilogram. Okay? So KE equals to half MV square, half mass. How to convert mass? To kilogram, gram to kilogram, divide 1,000. So 160 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Or you can directly divide 1,000 and put the value up to you. And then 18 square. Okay, this is what I told you. When you write the formula, you won't misplace the values. Sometimes when the students don't write the formula right, they will misplace. Okay, 160 times 10 to the power of negative 3 here, they will square it. So to avoid all these mistakes, you can use this step method. Okay? 
you will get 26 joules, correct? Is it 26? Yeah. Okay, next few questions, huh? Okay, look at question number six. Question number six, same uh, paper, question number six. Okay, the velocity of a P wave in the Earth's solid crust is 7.2 kilometer per second. This is the velocity. Frequency is 4.5 hertz. And you have to find the wavelength. Okay, V equals to F lambda. Lambda equals to V over F. You can rearrange first and then substitute or you just substitute first and then you can calculate up to you. So, V is 7.2, can you see this, kilometer per second. So, if you want to use kilometer per second, also can, because hertz is also per second, right? So, you can still use since they never give you the unit, okay? So, divide frequency is 4.2, eh, sorry, 4.5. How much you get? One point six is it? Okay. If you use kilometer per second, your answer will be kilometers. Let's say you want to use meter per second. Seven point two uh, times ten to the power of three divide four point five. You will get about uh, thousand six hundred meters. Okay. Okay, look at question seven. Okay, this time most of the time the student will make mistake finding out the angle. The question will uh, the question might trick you with the angle. Okay, can you tell me what is the angle of incidence? Um. So X is 56. Is it the angle of incidence? No. Why not? It's 90 minus X. No. Why 90 minus X? What is angle of incidence mean? Uh, angle of incidence means incidence angle between normal and incident ray. Okay, so a ray of light shines on the surface of the oil. The refractive index, okay, refractive index of the oil is given. So N is 1.47. On figure 7.1, draw normal at the point of where the ray enters. So the ray enters here. You cannot go and draw the normal line here. Understand? So you have to no draw the normal line where the light strikes. So normal line is the perpendicular line to the, to the surface or the boundary. Okay? Now the angle of incidence is here. Okay? So the angle X is 56. So here 56 means here will be 90 minus 56 will be 34 degree. Okay. Now, calculate the value of angle of refraction. They never asked you to calculate angle of incidence, but you have to find refraction. So, N equals to sine I over sine R. Okay. Substitute the values, class. Mendy, substitute the value 1.47 equals to sine 34. Divide sine R. Okay. Some of the students will face problem pressing the calculator. So how to find the angle? Okay. Rearrange the equation. You get sine R equals to sine 34 divide 1.47. Find this value first. And then you have to 
Keep, press keep sign. I think this value is about 0 0.38, right? And then R will be? Yeah. Oh, sorry. 20? Okay, 22.4. But in the question, if you see the angle is given in two significant figures. So follow the question, round it off to 22. Okay? Okay, look at your next paper, February, March. Question three, February, March. Just two, two more questions, huh? Okay, a wind turbine has a maximum output power of 1.8 megawatt. Okay, mega stands for prefix value. 10 to power of 6. 1.8 times 10 to power of 6 watt. Okay. The turbine operate at maximum power for 4 hours. So this is the time given in hours. Okay. Whether you need to convert the unit or not, you have to read the question first. Okay. Calculate the energy produced by the Wind turbine. So you have to find the energy operating at maximum power for four hours. Give your answer in kilowatt hour. So which means you have to make sure your power is in kilowatt. Okay, so what is the energy? Uh, sorry, how to convert it to kilowatt? Okay, A 1.8 times 10 to the power of? 3 kilowatt. Okay? 3 plus kilo, another 3, right? You get 6, correct? Okay? So, 10 to the power of 3 kilowatt. Okay, now write down the formula. E equals to Pt 1.8 times 10 to the power of 3 kilowatt times it's given in hour. You don't need to convert to seconds. So just 4.0. Okay, how much you get? Okay, so run it out to 7 to 0, 0 kilowatt hour. Okay, give in two significant figures. Okay. Any question? All right. Let's move on to the next part. Okay. Look, let's look into paper six. Sorry. Please. Okay. So paper six, experimental context, they might ask you the question based on this. Okay. Measurement of physical quantities such as length, volume, or force. You have to measure the uh, the parameters on the diagram. Okay? And then measurement of small distance or short interval of time. Usually, this is under speed uh, topic. Determining the derived quantities such as extension per unit load for a spring. Uh, usually, they ask like density where you have to Combine the parameters, combine the quantities, okay, derived quantity. And then testing and identifying the relationship between two variables like um, potential difference and also the length of wire. What is the relationship between them, okay? Comparing measured quantities such as angle of reflection. Okay, you have uh, angle of reflection, you have angle of refraction. Okay, they ask you to compare the calculated uh, measured value, okay? And then comparing derived quantities such as density as uh, stated be before this. Cooling and heating, including measurement of temperature. So you have to consider the heat topic as well, okay? 
Experiments using spring and balances. This is one of the favorite questions. Okay, the, the Hooke's law. Okay. Timing, motion, or oscillation. Oscillation, usually they give the pendulum. Okay, pendulum, you have to know one complete oscillation must go back to the original position. Okay, that is one complete oscillation. Okay, and then electric circuit also one of the uh, most favorite topic in IGCSE. Okay, every time there will be one question under this. Okay. Okay, optic experiment, like you have to draw the um, light ray of reflection, refraction, and you have to bring your protractor be, be, uh, along with you. Okay, it's very important. Okay, you cannot simply draw without the angle, measurement of the angle. And then procedures using simple apparatus, you have to, you know, the question number four, you have to investigate, you have to uh, prepare for the investigation. Okay. Okay, how to record readings in table? Because in paper, uh, paper six, every time there will be question on table. They will give uh, table values. They will miss few values, blank a uh, few columns, and they will blank the unit. Okay? So a measurement or calculated quantity must be accompanied by a unit, correct unit. Okay, you cannot simply calculate and then give the answer without unit. Must be with the unit. You know the shading of the table, okay? You have to give it the unit. Okay, each column of the uh, table should be headed with the name or symbol. Like for example, you give um, the heading, let's say you are talking about time. You can write time and draw a slash, put the unit. Or you can also use symbol of the quantity. All right? Okay. And then unit should be uh, should not be included with the data in the body of the table. Um, Raghavan, like when you do the table right, do you include the unit in the body of the table? Oh. Okay, on top, which is the heading. When you put the values right, I give you some example. Okay, you can see this uh, example. You don't put the unit everywhere here. CM, 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 no need. You just put the unit on the top. Okay, and the heading, then uh, uh, you can uh, make sure all the quantities have the unit. Okay, right. And then when you uh, fill in the blanks, right, for the table, how many significant figures you have to give? Okay, based on the table, you can see here, for R value, right, there's, there, are, there is three. So just follow, let's say 2.45 example. Okay, you have to give three significant figure based on the values given in the table. And they also ask you to fill in the table with the correct unit. Okay, you get one mark. All right. Drawing and analyzing uh, graph. Okay, how to draw graph? In the question, they usually give you the axis. If they give axis, you have to follow. You cannot change it. Y axis, what quantity? X axis, was what quantity? You have to follow it. And how big your graph should be? In a piece of paper, how big uh, your graph should be in the graph grid? More, it must be more than half. Don't draw shorter smaller than the half of the grid. You have to draw bigger one, which is more than half. Okay? And make sure you use, you have to use sharp pencil. Okay? You have to draw a thin line so that you can get a accurate uh, values. Okay? And then, make sure you label the, label the axis with the Symbol and also unit, or you can write the full uh, quantity name and then unit. For example, you can see here. Hey, sorry. Okay, so this graph we can must give the axis, and you can see in the question they already give you the y axis. What is on the y axis? What is on the x axis? 
So you have to label with the symbol and the unit. Here also same, symbol and the unit. Okay? And when you draw the line right, you have to draw a best fit. Okay, let's say you're, when you draw a line, you don't meet all the points that you have plotted. Do you think your answer is wrong? No. When you don't meet all the plotted uh, points in your graph, you have to make sure it is balanced, best fit. That's why they say best fit, which means you can draw a line, make sure both sides are up and uh, top and below the line, you have balanced uh, plotted points. Okay? Okay? And sometimes they ask you to find the value, okay, at 30 centimeter, what is the voltage? So you have to show on the graph that uh, you have uh, identified the value based on the graph and make sure you label it like 30. For example, uh, 30 centimeter. So here, what's the value? Okay. And they do ask you to find gradient from the graph. So when you are finding gradient, especially for the straight line graph, right? You're finding the gradient. You have to show the triangle on the graph. How big it should be? Can you draw a small triangle like this? Okay, advice not to because you might get wrong values. Okay, so what you can do is draw a bigger, which is more than uh, half of your graph. Okay, and you can start from the origin as well. Easy to calculate if you want. And whenever you take the coordinates right, x axis and y axis coordinates, take a whole number. Okay, easier for you to calculate. All right. Okay. And then look at uh, this slide. This is for the investigation question, question number four in paper six. Okay. Identify the independent variable and dependent variable. So independent variable means it's not depending on anything. Okay, for example, the just now voltage and length, right? The adjusting is okay, and then dependent is based on the independent variable. There will be changes in the values. That will be your dependent variable. Okay, okay, and then describe how and explain why variables should be controlled. In the question, they might ask you what is the variable which is kept constant. Okay. So you have to know which one is constant. Because the constant value, if you don't make it constant, it might affect your answers, your experiment. Okay. Suggest an appropriate number and range of values for independent variable. So sometimes they ask you to give a um, uh, list of uh, values, suggested values for angles, for example. Give uh, according to the question they ask. Sometimes they give round values, right? You just follow the round values. Okay. Suggest, uh, sorry, uh, describe experimental procedures. So you have to write down the steps, how you conduct the experiment. Just take the important one. Okay. Identify risk and suggest appropriate safety precautions. This safety precaution is very common question, especially when you're handling apparatus to avoid the perilous error. Okay. And then describe how to record and result of an experiment. We usually record the experiment result in table, which you already discussed. Describe how to process the result of an experiment to form conclusion. So in the question, they ask you how to form a conclusion. This conclusion is based on the theory that you have studied. Okay, for example, they give Hooke's law, right? So you must know the concept of Hooke's law. So you can conclude based on the uh concept okay M make reason prediction of expected result okay you have to ex uh, predict the result based on the concept as well okay okay when you uh, do this uh, investigation question right in the table let's say for this question Okay, investigate spring made from different metals. So different metal, and you are using, um, you're finding the extension actually. Okay, extension. So when you 
Uh, form a table. How do you form the table? You must have two columns at least. So first column, you write the metals or the spring. Okay, let's say you choose three metals, iron, copper, silver. And here, what do you write? Extension. Okay, if you write extension, extension is a physical quantity that must have unit. So you have to write the unit, for example, cm. Okay, do you need to include values in the table? Not necessary because you never conduct the experiment. So you don't need to include any values in the table. Okay. All right. So that's all from me. Do you have any questions to ask? Okay. All okay.